Welcome back to What Are Noobs for General Disturbance. This is the VK1602 Leopard. It's a tier five German light tank. It's located on the north spawn of Pilsen. And this one is under the command of Konopnik of Olymp. Well, it looks like uh, one of my mods has got stuck somewhere. <laughs> Showing seven seconds, but he hasn't been spotted yet. This little thing has actually got twice the armor of the Lux, which is the Panzerkampfwagen Spy, Aussung L. Uh, basically, this was to be its successor. Now, as you can see, it's kind of the shape of the Panther in many ways, but it's armed with a three centimeter cannon here. Oh, it ran into the wall there. Anything in sight? Nothing yet. Okay, there, we've got a target, Skoda. When he blasts his magazine out, now you can see here, he's actually armed with a three centimeter main gun, 30 alpha on each shot, 12 shots in each clip. And he's fired his first load of standard ammo. The, uh, the standard ammo, as you can see here, actually has penetration 95 millimeters of armor. With the premium APCR, it can do 110 millimeters of pen. And the RT is landing shells very close by, but not on us. Now these shells are actually capable of penetrating a KD-1. So remember, this is tier five. So it's a, a little light tank that can really hammer enemy um, heavies. Okay, we've lost the, one of our teammates. It's the AMX-13 FL-11, I'm afraid. I think he just spit off more than he could chew by going into the coal yard. There's a Type T-34 in there, and now we can see one of the other enemies. It's a Staghound. He pops into view. Oh, look at those shells going in. Massive hit there for 318 hit points. And remember, this is only a light tank, a little light tank. Of course, it was originally designed to be 16 tons in weight. That's where it gets the 1602 from. And 02 means it was the second design that they actually had available. Oh, he does it again. More damage. But again, the RT is definitely trying to get at him. Keeps missing him, though, because he's in the wrong place. But the enemy has already had a kill. As you can see there, there's a T25 AT also went down. Now, can you get some more shots? Well, we've got another AMX-13 FL coming up, but he goes for the T-34, takes him out, and then puts the other shells into the Staghound. In the right hands, this little tank can be very, very tough indeed. In fact, as I said, it's actually capable of ramming other enemy tanks, even light tanks, and doing severe damage to them. Okay, come up a bit further. No, didn't go up enough there, but he is very low on hit points, that guy. He's going to go down even to just one round. That's all it requires. Just one shot and he's gone. Now, he couldn't get the gun depression there. But the chappie's probably going to expose himself. And when he does, he'll be out the game just like that. Um, well, didn't get it there. And the RT's still trying to nail us. And the M10 takes a whole hammering as well. He's on fire. Oh, this could be a kill. It is a kill. Second kill for Konopnik. Now, it looks like one of the enemy tanks has popped below us. They did lose one of the enemy. Um, okay, Chappie locks onto his rear. He's gone. So that's another kill. Three kills now. I always thought this was a very chunky version of the looks in that it had the ability to really do severe damage. Well, he's gone down a bit deep, but he's now going to take out the steer. And he does get the kill on the steer. Now, the enemy doesn't know where he's gone. Now, they're going to have to look to see if they can find him. We're five up on the enemy now. And it doesn't look as if there's anybody over to our left. I think all the other enemy are over on the right side of the battlefield. Now, there are RT in this game, two of them. The enemy RT are an AMX-13 AM and a Gorilla. So he's probably going to see those sometime in about the next 10 seconds. Yeah, you 
he's, he's going around the other side to catch them from the rear. Now, where is that AMX-13? You can see the enemy's gone a long way around. Now, don't go into the cap yet. Got it. Nice. You can see the enemy tanks behind. Now, should see the enemy RT any second because they've probably gone up onto this platform area. Okay, so one of them's close. He's weaving. Trying to avoid fire. And the SFV is up there. And oh, boy, he nearly took around there. I'm not sure who it was that uh, fired the shot. But he's taken out the griller. He's now firing rounds in the SF, uh, SFV. That guy is, he knows we're reloading, so he's coming over to have a go. Here he comes. Okay. Now, get moving, because of course the guy's uh, up ahead. Gets one more in. He's now up to 2,000 hit points of actual damage. 1,500 spotting. So he's had a phenomenal game already. You see the other enemy tanks are way up to the north. Found the other arty. And yes, he gets him. And that must be Pascucci's. Four enemies remaining. Three of them heavies. One tank destroyer, the T-25-2. You can see how fast this one skips along. Maximum speed is 60 kilometers an hour. It can jump over the uh, ridge lines like that sometimes. You can get enough speed up. Okay, who's he got next? The uh, Churchill. Oh, and he does get the kill on him too. That's his top gun. There's the Black Prince. Now, who's next? Is it going to be the Black Prince? Well, he's got a distraction there. The T-23E3. So that will distract him whilst he plumps these rounds in. Yeah, he's ignoring us. But he shouldn't ignore us because we're the ones with slightly better pen than our teammate. And it looks like the Black Prince has gone. Which means now it's just the OI. Hello, Mr. OI. Do you want some rounds? There you go, have all these. And he does get them in. Oh, there's the T25 too. Okay, so he's pulled back to get into cover. The OI is about to get wiped out, but we need that reload. We're capping. Okay, the OI is still there. We're going after the T25 too. The OI is gone. Now it's just the T25 too. Oh, and he didn't get it. He could have rammed him. In fact, he should have rammed him because that's the last enemy. If he rams him, we get the bonus as well. Ram him! Ram him! Oh! Well, at least the T25 died. <laughs> well, at least that was an ace tanker game for Konopnik in the Leopard, the VK1602. He managed to get a um, arsonist because he set light to one of the enemy tanks and burned it up. In fact, I think I think that was one of the early ones he got in the game. That was at the Chaffee, I think, or, or one of the others. But anyway, he certainly got a fire, which burned him up. He also managed to get a spotter for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. Fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got nine. He got an Orlix medal for taking out two enemy tanks or tank destroyers, at least one tier higher than his own, in a light tank, which again, that takes some doing, because the light tank really hasn't got the armory normally to actually take out enemy mediums or heavies and the like, but he took them out, mainly down to the fact, of course, he's got that great little three centimeter cannon, which can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. He got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. A top gun for getting at least six kills. He missed out on the seventh one, which would have been nice if he got the T-25 too. And he also got a confederate for getting at least um, six enemy vehicles damage, which was subsequently taken out by other teammates. His win eight from that one, 36,927. A very high score indeed. In fact, if he hadn't hesitated... That moment after he fired his clip and there was nothing left, if he hadn't hesitated and kept driving straight towards that enemy, I reckon he would have rammed him and died just as he did it. And of course, then he would have uh, ended up with the bonus instead of actually getting killed by the last enemy, uh, the T-25-2. Because it, it was a bit annoying that he did get taken out by that guy right at the end. But uh, yes, if he hadn't hesitated, it would have been his as well. And he would have been one short of getting a Radley Waters out of that. Let's have a look at team scores.
Well, he definitely got the highest damage. Look at that. 3,392 hit points. The second highest damage was the T25-2 that killed him. He did 2,529. Third highest damage was the T23-E3. He got 2,250. When it came to kills, he got that one too. Six kills to Kulopnik. Three, uh, four kills went to the OI, I should say. Actually, he also got a cool headed. And three kills went to the T23 E3, the AEC on his team, who also got a Leather Slayers medal, and the T25 2 on the enemy team. So, of course, um, he got a Leather Slayers, which means he was killing higher tier opponents than himself in that game. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got that one too, which means he's got the top in all three columns. 1,817 went to Konopnik. 994 went to the T23 E3 and 837 went to the Hone E3 on his team who also picked up a confederate as well and that meant he was the only one who managed to get over a thousand base in that game and he nearly got double the amount well not quite double but it's nearly um double the uh, same amount of base xp that the uh, the highest teammate on his own team managed to get so very very good not quite double but close let's have a look at detail he fired only 156 rounds, but yeah, when they each do about 30 hit points of damage, it soon racks up. He got 120 direct hits on the enemy. 110 of those were penetrations. So you can see he does have a high percentage of pen, but then he did use some premium rounds in that game as well. He needed it too because some of the tanks he was taking on were heavy tanks. He needed that extra pen just to make sure he got through. He did 3,392 hit points of damage, of which 94 were at more than 300 meters. So most of the damage was done at close range. And in fact, you need to do that with this three, three centimeter because it's not very accurate unless you fire by burst damage. That is, you know, you um, you press the trigger in, in sm short spurts, which keeps it accurate. Uh, but it means you take longer to actually blow your wad at the enemy. So you have to be careful. You don't... Uh, uh, miss all your shots uh, and you know, ideally you want to do what uh, uh, Konopnik was doing actually which is to pick a target where you know you can get it accurate and get most of those shots in as quickly as you can before pulling back just in case somebody decides to shoot at you. You also receive four hits all four penetrated the armor is not that good but it's better than the looks much better than the looks um, almost twice as much better than the looks Six enemy vehicles were spotted, 14 enemy vehicles were damaged, and six killed, which means he only failed to damage one enemy tank in the entire game, and 1,575 hit points of damage assistance in the game. So that was spotting. He actually suffered a loss from the game, but that was down to the fact that he did use the premium ammo. 23,719 credits loss, but uh, if you consider the fact that he did fire a lot of premium ammo, then that's actually quite good by comparison. He also managed to earn 5,451 experience points as well. So a decent game with a very, very, very high win eight, 36,927. Very impressive indeed. I hope you enjoyed that game. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.